Hi, welcome to Fighting Talk. I'm Kudo Mal. I'm on a mission to spread the news of Kudo in the UK, but also the benefits of being a martial artist. Today on Fighting Talk, Peter Constantine. He has achieved many and now runs his own specialist security consultancy company. He's becoming one of the lead close protection experts in the world. Hi, my name's Peter Constantine. <laughs> Hi Peter, welcome. Welcome to Fighting Talk. Yeah, hi Mal. Yeah, good to be here. Thank, thanks for coming on. Um, and coffee. It's, a, it's, a, it's an honour and yeah, I've got my coffee. I've, yeah. I've gone from tea on to coffee now because uh, yeah. it's, it's starting to get that, that point, I think, of the week. Absolutely. <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, I joined the BCKA uh, yeah. last year. I, I continue to practice karate. It's my passion is kudo. Um, because it could, in my mind, disproves a lot of inf ineffective practices. I, I love it, Mal. Yeah. I love the kudo. Yeah. I think it's one of the most exciting combat competitions to watch. Brilliant. I love it. Yeah. I think it's um, unlike, don't know, you know, I don't want to induce a yeah. whole fucking thing, but when it yeah. comes to cage, I've got no interest in it. No. Um, but when I look at the kudo and the skill levels at the top yeah. for kicking, punching, grappling, takedowns at speed, and also the rules themselves, what they allow, I yeah. think it's probably the best combat rule sport there is. Yeah. That was Look. so relieving. Honestly, I, I mm. heard that through the grapevine. Um, yeah. Lee, I've got to give Lee Taylor a shout out for that because yeah. Lee, Lee Taylor said, Peter, Mm. advocates for it you know you, um, you need to get in contact with him about it and my, my question yeah. is like and I, and I don't want to go into the, the politics of it all but it was like why hasn't this kicked off before you know if it's been around for so yeah. long like I, why is that and yeah that's that's my that's my aim <laughs> so yeah, I'm not going to go into the rest of it clean shape the shape that's that again you know yeah and as you know whatever we can do in the in the associations to help further that yeah you know I just love to see it um, I think it's one of the most exciting, or one of them, you know, I like the combat yeah. jujitsu. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, you know, um, but the kudo, I think, has got, you know, it's got everything in it, all those elements. Are, yeah. Um, really well, exciting. Good skill level as well. Some it, of the stuff that they've taken out, though, Pete, is, is like, um, like for MMA, for instance, like heel hooks, massive yeah. amount of damage caused. Yeah. Uh, don't feel it till it's too late, all these yeah. different types of things. And yeah. the, the thing that I like about Kudo, because it sits more in the amateur uh, level um, and until it gets to the top level. And when, mm -hmm. it, when you come into being a top level fighter, then you're probably going to be sponsored, invested. So it's, yeah. it's no longer amateur when it gets to the top level anyway. So, you know, same, I, with any of our, same with any of our martial arts. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's competitive. Yeah. yeah. There's, you, you end up with a bit of a, you know, a, a, a gap between yeah. those who are funded those who are at the top, those who are very professional. Yeah, yeah. And I still think in martial arts, you know, even if people are not funded, and I've, I've had this argument with, um, you know, our English Karate Federation and, and the national team, you know, the, the complaint always was, well, we don't get enough funding, you know, not like Kazakhstan where they get a house if they come third with a bronze medal, all that, yeah. you know. And my view has always been the funding's great, but if you've got the intent and you really want to go for it, you can yeah. train hard enough and skillful enough to get to that level. You know? Yeah, yeah. Nice if but, you are paid, but it's it's above yeah. not in the And system. I always felt like that there was never really anything um, like it's better now because you know kids coming into martial arts, got they just don't know how much they've got to choose from. You know, no. they haven't got to seek anything out anymore. It's all on the doorstep. Yeah. Um, sure. The the bits with good order that I like is the. Um, You've got still got that lineage that, that matters so much to a lot of traditional martial artists mm -hmm. that you can go right. This guy uh, is an original judoka. You know this yep. person he is original karate, and yep. and you can you can trace those things back. But it's not as important because it's forward facing. It's a you know it's a hybrid system. It's developing. Yep. 
Um, yeah. But it, from a club level, like I run a kudo class, mm. um, and I would say out of my kudo class, maybe only a handful want to want to compete. Yeah, you know, and and this is what I was trying to get across to people is that in your club, I'm not yeah. asking everybody to give up what you're doing. You know, but if you have got somebody there yeah. that you think that would couldn't do that, and let's face it, it's all transferable. If you're if you're yeah. a pragmatic martial artist, you can just bring it in. Absolutely, so, and I, I want people to work with. So that was my that was my point. But, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. No, with you on all of that, Mel. Anything we can do that that furthers the kudo in the UK? Absolutely. I joined the BCKA uh, yeah. last year. Um, to be honest, I I was looking at it for quite some time. You know, I've followed. I followed everything, your Jeff's work, your work, Ian's yeah. work. Um, and, you know, I was kind of stuck in a bit of a rut, you know. I was just yeah. trying to think to myself, if I, if I, I'll stay on my own because it's easier. Um, if I join back in an organisation, I'm going to get the same politics and, yeah. and so on and so on. So that kind of leads me to, to my question. You're very successful in setting up these organisations yeah. um, and maintaining it. And I've had such a good experience since I've been involved. Right. Um, but... It, I was I wasn't sure really originally whether I should be joining the BCKA, whether it's yeah. uh, BCA and you know WCA. So yeah. have the three if three organisations got the same underpinnings, you know, how do you how does someone know which one to go for? Yeah, sure. So so if you go right back, I think this year it's the twenty seventh year that we started the BCA, yeah. which is the British Combat Association, which Jeff and I kicked off, yeah. um, and that was really. That was an idea I'd had for some time. I was up to then, I'd been the chief instructor of the British Grassley Association, which I'm still very close to. And a good friend of mine, Brian Seabright, runs that, who I've trained with for 45 years, probably. Um, but it, that was a pure Grassley organisation. But I wanted to do the emphasis on practical mal, and it, and it wouldn't fit there. Mm. So I'd got the idea of the, um, you know, an association that was open to all martial arts, but, but had a sort of practical emphasis to it. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm reluctant to say self-defense, but you know, moving into that more yeah. effective, practical um, flavor to it. Yeah. Uh, I come across Jeff, and that's a, another story in itself, um, but just thought that the pair of us, because I got on so well with him, this would work really well, which of course it did. It was when we started it, it was sort of add water and stand back. Yeah. You know, just exploded, little yeah, blue touch yeah, paper. Yeah. Um, but the, the but you touched on it before. One of the things I was keen on um, that that was the brass place over the door. Mal was no politics. Yeah, yeah. yeah and that yeah. hasn't changed. No. So we essentially wanted nice people. That hasn't changed. Uh, no egos. Anybody is sort of first amongst equals. We help. We, we've got a light touch, so we help as much as possible and interfere as yeah. little as possible. Yeah. And that hasn't changed. So I remember when we first started the BCA and I was advertising in fighting arts in those days, martial arts illustrated, combat. And yeah. of course, it was no internet stuff going on, no, <laughs> no, mem no digital memberships. No. These all came by post and the post yeah. was like this, you know. Right. We, host was coming with elastic bands of people and I think it was just it hit that spot at the moment where people had got fed up with being restricted yeah. to, to seek other things yeah. from a foundational art that they were doing whatever that might be and it was clear that that same territorial restriction was happening in all systems and arts not yeah. just karate which which was sort of my you know principal home system if you like yeah um and so there was the BCA, you know, and that philosophy hasn't changed since then over that 27 years. We had lots of um, Karate people in it. So I'm, I'm just moving the thread on to the BCKA, the British yeah. Combat Karate yeah. Association. Um, but because of the sort of background of the BCA, it, it was really, it was a non, it's a non-competitive association. Yeah. So anybody who's in it, who's competing, is, yeah. is fine. They're doing it. They're doing their own thing. Yeah. But I've got quite a few people who wanted to be in the world WKF yeah. style competitions, yeah. obviously then through the English Karate Federation or the SKGB, the Scottish side of it. Yeah. Um, and we weren't members of anybody. A, a complete reluctance to join anybody, particularly anybody who purported to be a governing body. So yeah. I just wanted absolutely yeah. nothing to do with it. I'd sat on English governing body boards before, saw where they all went and just wanted nothing to do with it. Yeah. But there was a, a sort of, you know, um, a pressure from underneath. 
So we started the BCKA, which was purely karate and essentially for, or an element of it, for people who wanted to be in the English Karate Federation because they had people competing under WKF rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But since then, of course, we've got all styles of karate in it. Um, people who are doing full contact, people who are... So uh, for any instructor who comes in, we, we dual membership them. So even though yeah. the club and the students, because they're wearing white gi and doing karate type things, they're in the yeah. BCKA box, and then the instructors are in both boxes. Oh, so yeah. they've got to fuss in both camps and find out what both networks are doing. Yeah. The WCA, World, World Combat Association, came later. And for many, many years, we've had lots of interest from abroad, but because we were so active doing things here, we got monthly, instructor courses we've got seminars going on and and i couldn't see the appeal to people abroad yeah so i always put them off yeah. but then there was this constant yeah, well, yeah, so, you're gonna do it. <laughs> yeah and then of course what what came together as these things often do was ian abernethy with all his international teaching yeah. and he was being asked about the bca so hence that was the start of the WCA, the World Combat Association. Right. And that's grown really well. We've got some really great people in it. Australia, Canada, States, Europe, Germany particularly, yeah. um, where Ian's regularly doing seminars. And Ian and I have done a couple as well now. Yeah. So so that's it. Those are the three. Same philosophy for all of them. Again, help when we can. Um but let people do their own thing. You know, they might be doing tit your own competition, purely practical, um, art, sport, whatever it means to them, yeah. get on with it. That's the yeah, yeah. thing. Well, I think as, as from my point of view of coming on board, I think the, our most recent conversation about things like insurance and competitions and, yeah. and so on, uh, it, you know, that, that for me uh, saved me months of work. I mean, it's so, different now with COVID-19, um, yeah. you know, but for myself who, who actually works a nine to five, five days a week, and tries cramming everything else in the best yeah. I can around that. Um, I'm moving into more self-employment now, but that was, yeah. that, that's frustrating because you've got questions yeah. and you think just who do yeah. you go to? Who do you, you know, who can just yeah. get that? And 20 minutes conversation. Now yeah. I know where to get my insurance, what insurance yeah. I don't need to have, and I yeah. don't need to pass on unnecessary charges to my students because... Correct. You know, not everybody is doing it business mind. No. Some people are not for profit and and yeah. so on. So you know, for, for that, you know, I, I can't I can't say to enough people to, to right. get on board. Um, yeah. but you're recognised as an internationally in, internationally sorry as a as a personal protection uh, expert. Yeah. You know, so in in your experience, I can draw upon upon your experience here. Um, what's the difference in learning as something as like a combat sport yeah you know, something that you, you know you feel pretty handy about yourself you're, yeah. you're in good shape you're comfortable in any situation so like a mixed yeah. martial arts setup compared to to personal protection because yeah. obviously that's pretty much uh, at the moment you know everything that pops up is it's got your name against it yeah i think this is going to be difficult in the time we've got Mal. yeah of course yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> try, and, try and sort of summarize it i've got a i've got a sort of triangle and um we the, the term that's ended up over the door is self-protection yeah okay so self-protection um has got two two base elements to it one is what we would call self-defense which is yeah. call that the physical side of it okay. i hate the term but call that the physical side yeah. of it yeah. On the other side of it is personal security. Yeah. That's what's missing from the martial arts side of things. They're always on the physical side of it. Um, so when we look at combat spores, the, the closest word to that is fighting skills. Yeah. And that probably is the last thing you need when it comes to self-protection. Yeah. In the street. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, and also the reliance on what you think you need, which are fighting skills, if you're taken by surprise, because you've had a lack of awareness, lack of assessment, lack of preparedness for what's going to come to you, mm -hmm. then those fighting skills become pretty useless. Yeah. And also, and this goes back to my very first days of working on the doors in Manchester, 
I knew too much. I had too much knowledge about the combination, strikes, kicks, blocks, attacks, defences, footwork, stances, all that shape. And if I could sort of summarise it, if you look at the old self-defence uh, sequences that you saw in, in magazines when we could buy a martial arts magazine. Mm -hmm. um, so you'd start on page A and you'd have one guy pointing at the other guy and then you'd, you'd move on a sequence of photographs, you'd turn the page, you still have another sequence of photos. So you're on the 18th technique and the guy's <laughs> eventually lying on the ground. Just a complete pile of bollocks. It's, it's martial arts in Jean's mouth. <laughs> for for self-defense, you should have two photographs Two of them standing like that, and the next time one person's doing that. That's the next <laughs> photograph. Yeah. Because exactly. all he's had is a big right cross delivered by the person who did it first. That's yeah. self-defense in its purest sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Everything that, that... else is painting legs on a snake. Okay. <laughs> it's superfluous to requirements. Yeah. And and the analogy is like the old egg timer, if you think about it, with and are you a, recently i've been talking about this but you know the old egg timer you turn yeah, yeah, it over sure. the grains yeah. of sand go it's through tiny eight gap. million grains of sand yeah. you turn it over but at any one time only one grain of sand can go through yeah. now if all eight million try and get through you get a complete log jam that's what you get with all martial arts skills if you've not honed them down to the two or three or four you need when it yeah. comes on top on the street you get paralysis by analysis yeah, you yeah. can't find the one that you need. You know too much. Yeah. Um, and, and where um, martial artists have gone astray and sort of lost their own path in a way is thinking, well, in that case, what I need to do to teach practical skills is throw everything out. But yeah. what they're throwing out is a thing they've enjoyed for 20 or 30 years. <laughs> yeah. So what, yeah. We all, what I always say is, look, you've got your big box of martial arts everything that's in it that you enjoy you know with yourself you've got some yeah. traditional karate you've got kudo yeah. you've yeah. got the boxing you've got grappling skills yeah. and yeah. you might be teaching those to your class and they may yeah. be forming the basis of your teaching and grading syllabus yeah. Yeah. but yeah. when it comes to say the street what you need to do is take a few of those out into a separate box if you want to do kudo you don't take all those no because it ain't going to work no, so no, 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 you, no you take the ones that you need for that competition style or yeah. the tick you're on wkf type yeah. competition yeah yeah so yeah. there's your big box don't throw that away even if there are things in there that don't seem practical yeah. because if they're hard to do and you enjoy it do yeah. it teach it yeah yeah, yeah. the philosophy now so totally well that, i think that's why it's been a good fit for me like I, you just exactly yeah. said it um you know i i came on board in the karate element because Mm. Gojin Karate is the, the label yep. that we go under. Um, it's like we've got kind of kudo at the center. And, yes. you know, that's, that's why I say it's, the, it's a scrap. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. it's basically when everything's gone yeah. wrong, you've got everything more possibly wrong you could have. And there you go, yeah. you're in the middle of it. Um, yeah. I'd like to have those skills. But, you know, the, the part that I guess that joining the organization for me was about mm. was, yeah. was networking because and the great coming across those three yeah. you know is is fantastic and i get emails popping up left right and center of things right. that i think wow that's that's brilliant you know yeah, so yeah. i try and get more time for that <laughs> but yeah. um but it was kind of like i'm getting older right mm. and my my skill level's still there and in some ways you get you get more intelligent in in your and yeah. your context the contextual yeah. sort of work right and, and the physical part, I'm thinking, I'm not going to the floor. I'm not having my ankle wrenched again. I'm not yeah. having my knee locked out. I'm not having all these sorts of things. So, you know, I think it's very important to, to, to have that. And I think that's why, you know, again, um, highlighting the organization, why, why we were a good yeah. fit. All of this experience has got me to a point where um, I have a good understanding of, of what would happen in a scrap, what would happen in live situations, yeah. what happens when you're in the pub. And, you know, let's say that, you, you've got you've got eyes on you thinking the last place I want to go is the toilet, you know, yeah. you know because if I go to the toilet I get sucker punched, you know this sort of yeah. thing. Um, combat sport is is helpful, um, but how how do you think um, real life situations and experience um, kind of underpins how how much you should be teaching? I suppose because I see a lot of people are teaching things that. Yeah, like no, life defenses and it just scares the life out of me if i'm honest <laughs> yeah back to, well yeah no it's back to uh but go, go back to that self-protection yeah. sort of pyramid with yeah, the sure. 
physical self-defense and the personal security. The mm -hmm. personal security trumps everything because it, it's all based on awareness, creating awareness. So you th see things happen, you're able to assess them before they happen. But going back to my experience on the door for 10 odd years, I was working doors in Manchester. Um, I, everything is predicated on pre on, on preemption and preemptive strikes. Right. You cannot wait till it kicks off. Yeah. At touching yeah. distance, there's only one rule over the door and that is action beats reaction. Yeah. You know, I've thrown a million, two million, three million blocks in 56 years of martial arts. Can't think I've ever thrown one on the door. No. Doesn't happen. No. If you end up fighting with combat skills, you've yeah. done something wrong. Yeah. You need to stop it before it starts. Yeah. And I don't care how good a fighter you are, there's always going to be a faster gun in dodge. Yeah. And luck can go against you. Trip yeah. off a curb, catch a lucky shot, be a bit late preempting. So you have to stop it before it turns into a fight. Yeah. And that's why, you know, combat skills are great, but people again think that that's what staying safe is no no yeah. that's a fight that's being able to win a fight yeah. you, you should never get to a fight <laughs> you know? yeah yeah fight yeah. means you're moving around in stances exchanging blows no <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. You never get there preemption hit it's, first hit hard you, you know yeah. it's goodbye problem <laughs> that's it yeah, yeah. i yeah. i i teach crisis intervention as part of my job and Good. um and, and usually it comes down to risk assessments and people overcomplicating and getting confused. And yeah. there's a great analogy with the egg timer, yeah. definitely. Well, com um, you know, conf conflict management skills, you know, you know, certainly from the security industry, from my side of it, it's formed part of licensing. And they all the conflict management models, every single one works on reasonableness. There's nothing reasonable about somebody who's pissed. No. Do, well, you do not listen to reason. No. They might do for 10 seconds till they go around the fishbowl, yeah. come no, round yeah. and just go back yeah. to the set position they were in. They reset <laughs> and they're just as thick and stupid and yeah. unreasonable as they were. Yeah. So conflict management models work with people who are reasonable. Yeah, they do yeah, yeah. not work with people who will not, you know, who are not able yeah, to, yeah. to reason. Yeah, because the so, transferable bit for me in, in, in you know, in protection um, is the risk of doing nothing compared to the risk of doing something. Sure. Uh, and yeah. that's the, the core sort of basis of that, yeah. you know. Um, so I, I suppose when I'm looking at um, like Kudo, for instance, yeah. as, as a mixed martial art uh, in a gi, that's what a lot of people call it, um, yeah. which I'm finding out. <laughs> uh, yeah. And um, as far as um, ineffective practices and things like that. So I suppose what I'm saying is, do, do you think it's, um, worth having a level right because not everybody can be a doorman not everybody well, can can you know has had a life where uh, of trauma yeah. and being up you know and living in tough areas and all the rest of it oh, sure. um so you know i think and this is why i've been pushing the, the kudo for yeah. younger generations so literally yeah. bring them through when they need it because yeah. the older you get the less you need to be able to fight you know in my yeah. opinion you might enjoy it but i don't you don't need it no no statistically uh, and, yeah, and you're getting older and everything starts falling apart anyway. So you start, So I, I'm thinking to myself that the difference I see quite often in an instructor is that if they've, done, if they've had a, quite a good life experience mm. and protection or they've been involved in combat sports so they know the knock somewhere and the rest of it, yeah. they, tend, they tend to have a better understanding of drawing upon things like if they're incorrect, they can draw upon kata because they're like, yeah. I know what that is for real, you know, because they yeah. can see the body. You know, yeah, sure. So would you say that's kind of a fundamental to be a good instructor or do you think it's possible to be a good instructor without any kind of life experience or combat sport? Yeah, uh, the, but absolutely, of course you can because when you look at, look, go back to that big box with all the martial arts in, it, it has so many outcomes from it, you know, that could be fitness, it could be teaching an art, you're teaching, you know, a combat sport within that sort of art sport box, if you like. Yeah. But where they step outside of that to purport to be teaching something where credibility has to be there in the first place, then, you know, unless they're 
caveating that by saying, you know, this is my best understanding of how this will work because X has told me and Y has told me. So if you think about it, that's like in a sense saying, you know, if you parallel it with the military, you would have a military instructor doing um, squad training drills who's never been to war. Yeah. But he's yeah, been true. taught by people who have. Right, yeah. And we're who've doing, been yeah. taught. So you yeah. can't say the British Army has stopped all instruction in how to go to war because we haven't got any instructors who've been to war. <laughs> true, no, that's a very good way of putting it, but yeah. They, but they've been taught by... There is a, there is a, a knowledge base there yeah. based on absolute pragmatism pragmatism of yeah. how war should be fought with the technology that that that, that military has yeah. um, the problem with martial arts is there isn't that common knowledge yeah. people are making it up and yeah. purporting yeah. Yeah. that it's pragmatic yeah. and that's the issue that i have with it yeah right no okay. you don't have to have gone and done it providing yeah. that what you're teaching is yeah. informed by that reality I, I, you know i because it's under a pragmatic banner i realized that the you know there's this very snobbery in combat sports that you know we're better and all the rest of it you yeah. know and and I, when i met these people the only thing i was interested in was actually meeting nice people you Correct. know that actually got great brains on them Correct. and, and yeah. that's like they say about coaches you, know, you don't have to be the yeah. best fighter to be a very good yeah. coach no, you know, no, I would say don't. I was a mediocre fighter. Um, so like, yeah. I think coming to Kudo, I came to Kudo too late because if I got in there earlier, yeah, sure. you know, it would have been a better suit. And I got so annoyed at the rules yeah. and the limitations, I could never really do what I wanted to do. No, no, no. You know? no. So uh, luckily I got in there early enough, but too late for me. But yeah, you know. but, yeah. And, and, and again, go back to that big box of martial arts that's got everything in it. You know, everything that you may have acquired that you are either keeping slightly separate when you teach it. So let's say you've done some Wing Chun with the karate, you might teach the two separately, or you yeah. might meld them together and you might meld them with some boxing, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so there's your kickboxing sorted yeah. out in a way. So yeah. you might be teaching a composite, but you know, if depending on what it is you're teaching, you don't have to have credibility in every single area. No, no. You can't have done it, you know, how many people have had all that life experience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, how many, you look at American police officers who are trained, they're carrying a pistol. You know, I would think 80% have never fired it in anger. Yeah, yeah. But, but they will become firearms instructors. You yeah. know, I've got guys who train with me who are, who are firearms instructors when I used to teach the police, um, uh, those, those um, units that were armed. 90% of them have never shot anybody, never fired it in anger, mm. but they will become teachers. But there is that common body of knowledge, like the military teachers. They will pass that on. Um, yeah. And what they can't do is assume how something will happen. Yeah. Because yeah. they have a body of experience yeah. Yeah. that's constantly updated through yeah. a central distribution, if you like, that will say to them, this has happened, we've got this recent incident. We don't have that in martial arts. No. We don't have that control. People can shoot off and pretend like the knife defense. Yeah. You know? It's just most of it's bollocks, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. so, um, one of the guys I've been talking to um, is and it's Chris Hansen. And um, he, he goes to seminars and he was talking to me about that he doesn't like to present in a particular way. So in other words, he doesn't, he doesn't, he's a, a karate dang great. So but he yeah. doesn't wear the correct suit. He won't wear that. Um, yeah. He likes to go to Savat. He likes to cross train and lots of different arts. So he wears a yeah. t-shirt, right? Mm -hmm. And I've, I've noticed that a lot of the stuff that you're doing, I really see you in a gi. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is that for the same reasons? Um, yeah. I, if I, uh, I'm just trying to think. When, when Ian and I were last teaching in Germany, yeah. it's a karate. Oh, they're karate right, okay. right, so okay. yeah so we wear gi right okay yeah so uh, i was teaching <laughs> yeah i was teaching down in essex last year all karate all in a gi okay. yeah but if i go and teach practical stuff or kickboxing yeah then no rag order okay. no no right, okay yeah. so it's for the, for the occasion i suppose that just shows the breadth of the knowledge that you have yeah yeah, um, I, I I love that about Kudo because to be honest, that uh, in our dojo we've got a judo guy, you know, mm. judo Steve, and 
you know, we've got Kieran who's come from a karate background. I've got yeah. AJ, who was, who was pretty born and bred one of my students. But we've, we're like a bit of a melting pot, but we all yeah. love wearing the gi because, yeah, yeah. you know, of all the fun stuff you can do with it. We're quite aware that, that that's outside of the self protection yeah. part of it, but, you know, it suits for us, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, uh, I mean, training every week, we, do, we don't train in geese. You yeah. know, we're, we're training every single week with my training group, and we're just in shorts tracky bottoms tops nice. because it's easy to train in yeah you yeah. can't actually train properly in a gi yeah once you get that wet it's <laughs> sticking to you like yeah. wallpaper <laughs> glue so maybe maybe that's what we like i don't know <laughs> yeah. let's, let's, let's move on quickly <laughs> yeah <laughs> um right so i had a few questions from other people yeah um ian abernethy has a yeah. massive online presence yeah. Um, and one of the questions I thought was really good that came out of this is that you taught Ian. Yeah. And people were asking, what was Ian like as a student? Yeah, Ian was great. <laughs> it, it goes back goes back a good number of years now. Um, and there were a couple of people at the time I wanted to invite to come and train with me on, on my Thursday morning group training session, my training day. Yeah. Ian was one of them and somebody else. Um, and Ian jumped at it. And you think of that commitment then for the next however many, six, seven years and still comes over, but pretty much every week from the north end of the Lake District to West Yorkshire, every single Thursday morning. Uh, so three hours to get here, three hours to go back, teaching in the evening. So that I think that says it all to start with. Yeah. Um, and the great thing about Ian is um, he'll just carry on till he falls over. <laughs> yeah, he'll just fall over. Warrior spirit. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. A sponge, um, thinks about things. Um, great, great to have. And, and you know, um, we're, apart from the fact, such a nice guy as well, his knowledge, you know, the history and the knowledge he brings with him, but how... He makes that work with the mechanics of learning physically yeah. as well. So yeah. he's got that completely rounded martial arts package. Good friend and uh, and and a training partner, not a student. You know. He's yeah, a, I mean that's that. I suppose you go yeah. through, uh, like say with my students, the yeah. they're not they are my students. They don't call me sensei in the pub. Yeah, it's sure. it's one of those things. Uh, yeah. But I did have a student which I thought might be. Um, like Ian's training, and I was thinking maybe all the books in your background is because you were trying to keep ahead of Ian. Yeah. Because <laughs> I had a student who was literally, he brought Ian Abernethy's book yeah. to me and said, you need to check this guy out. Because it was like um, going to church and then, and then having scripture read to you. Because I was thinking, yeah, yeah. how does he know all of this stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He slapped sure. his book in front of me. It was, you know, it was a great guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Now, the second question was about mm. Jeff. He was, for me, it was the first person mm. that you know, my VHS tape, a tape, sorry, VHS yep. tape, and, and I, I couldn't find it. I'm desperate, like me and my wife nearly fell out over it. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. it was just basically, it was about, you know, the fence. And yep. it was using, you know, foul language. It was, yep. it kind of changed the game. You know, is he, is he as scary, you yep. know, when he's doing that in life? Because when you're safe at home watching on VHS, yeah. but like, I can imagine someone like that, like getting right up in your face, you know. Yeah, well, about yeah. Jeff. Yeah. was about um you know him the, his temper yeah he hasn't got one wow no he's not got his temper he's yeah. probably the person and it made me think really he's the person that i know who has the least temper yeah. of anybody i've ever met yeah and is the least angriest person i've never seen him angry or have so, a temper. So, so i mean but it's like when i when i want to present as angry I dig down to emotions that I've had. Yeah. You know, so I suppose it's like acting, isn't it? You know, you just. Well, that's, the, that's the point. Yeah. You, yeah. You're on it, Mal. Yeah. yeah. What you're seeing is the theatre of aggression. Yeah. And that's a switch. So that theatre of aggression yeah. is a switch that he's developed personally yeah. for situations. Right. Well, just one thing. Not him. No, no. If I, if, we, if I ever meet him, if I'm yeah. ever enough to meet him, Please stand with me for a while because yeah. you know, like when you watch someone on TV so much yeah. that you start to believe that they're the character. Yeah, I, I, I'll probably be pretty scared. If I yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, it's theatre. We've yeah. we've all had to do it. We, there's yeah. a thing from the door is is 
um, is to be able to click that switch and drop into that. It's a role that people yeah. play. And Jeff has just taught himself, like he has on the physical side of it, that presentational side of it yeah. does it so well. Yeah. Ergo, Definitely. you're convinced that that's him. <laughs> and it just isn't. Oh my God. Absolutely not him. You know, I was thinking of, I, had, I had more hair then, right? I was thinking yeah. of shaving my hair off and, and trying to look a bit like a bouncer. I should not buy the yeah, jacket yeah. a lot. Yeah. Um, and my, my final question for you, yeah. thanks very much for your time. I really do appreciate it. Was, um, like, I, I try to take a look online and look yeah. for people that I think um, are doing a great thing and, and maybe trying to support us some way. And I was online and I had a pretty bad day this one day and I seen this guy, Chris Hansen. Um, yeah portraying something uh, from MMA as a mm. shooter, as a, the, the life hand. And yeah. I was thinking, man, that's such a stretch. And I made a quite a negative comment. And I rarely put comments online if I can help it. Yeah. Because um, obviously it's in the moment, right? And and then I did. And then he came back and he explained actually what he meant by that. It was just positioning. Anyway, yeah. this relationship's grown. And then I find out that this guy, is all he wants to do is try and bring martial arts from all over the world together in a way like we've just been talking about yeah. like it doesn't matter if you're a top level fighter or you're just a hobbyist or, sure. or just a, even interested just to come yeah. along to, to watch um and he's cross training so the big thing about him is cross training which again yeah. you know suits yeah. so I, I said to him he's probably got the, one of the hardest jobs um ever in the world you know um how and maybe he should be kind of linking with lots of organizations. So, do you, you know, what would your advice to, to him be? He, he also wanted to know, sorry, he'd slip it in, if, uh, how you brought Wing Chun. Because uh, he said that Ian mm. told him that you practiced Wing Chun. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, he, imagine, I suppose we can start with that then. So, how did you take Wing Chun into what you do? Just dead, dead quickly on that one, Mal. Yeah. My yeah. first karate instructor back in 1964 was a guy called Danny Connor. Right. who was probably one of our best martial artists, died sadly oh. just in the turn of 2000. Um, about a couple of years after I started, he went off to Japan and China um, and was there for many years, made lots of connections and came back Chinese. So he came back with all the Chinese martial arts, Wing Chun being one of them. He opened... Um, uh, shop in Manchester um, and I was then back with him doing Wing Chun and Sam, uh, Sam Kwok who people know I was Sam's first indoor student oh, yeah. uh, I've been in Hong Kong training with um, Ip Chun um, both as private lessons and then in his club in um, New Territories in the evening I was there for about six or seven weeks yeah. so uh, and then other uh, instructors as well but the Wing Chun was interesting for me because when I was working the door it actually gave me something at a distance that karate hadn't in a way right okay yeah that makes sense yeah the karate I knew not the karate that people know now yeah with yeah. all the kata yeah. and the applications from kata mm -hmm. that would that would put a different spin on distance yeah. Yeah, but yeah. certainly I was a competitive fighter on the Great Britain and England teams when I started working on the door. So every fight I had started at eight foot away, <laughs> up to the point where I started on the door and we're nose to nose. So, yeah. so the Wing Chun gave me a confidence and a feeling and a sensitivity to play with things at that, that touching distance. Yeah, but right. apart from that, I just like Wing Chun. You know, I like the, I like the principles, the applications, but I've taken it. I don't teach Wing Chun. Right. I, I wouldn't purport to do it. Yeah. Um, I take what I've done in Wing Chun and melded it with even boxing. Yeah. Melded it with the karate. Melded yeah, you sound, it with the you sound just like him. <laughs> That's what Chris, yeah. is, Chris exactly said pretty much those yeah. words because they go hand in hand, literally, you know. Dude, absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Well put. Yeah. Um, so that that's my sort of Wing Chun background. So I don't right. teach Wing Chun. I've done right. it, done it to a good level with yeah. really great people. Yeah. But I then put it with other things. No. Well, that's I mean that that's that's brilliant. And um, from that, I suppose this is what I was mentioning, Chris. Because yeah. when it, when it's that it's a definite name drop. You know, I'm not like going, oh well, this is my new friend. It's just um, when you know that someone's got an uphill battle and and yeah. that you put yourself online. 
Um, like I've started putting quite a lot of stuff online recently um, mm. because I'm stuck in the house and you know I've got the time uh, to do it, I guess. But yeah. um, I I just feel for people because there's more people out there trying to tear people down than than actually go ahead. So you know, Chris is obviously trying his best. I, I suppose he's feeling his way. He's realised the enormity of the the job. Yeah. Um, but you've gone and you've formed organisations, you know, yeah. and you need structure. So yeah. you know, what what would your advice to be to someone like Chris who's you know new at, at trying to push a vision or or something to the world? Yeah. Um, you've 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 got to see the end game. You know what? what because in a way. It, that's been done you know yeah. we, we've all tried to yeah. to say this is an inclusive world yeah. Um, yeah i was having this conversation with jeff the other week jeff um when we started to do seminars as he started to get slightly more spiritual with the whole thing yeah. i thought we'd all end up giving a group hug and singing kumbaya <laughs> we're, we're moving into that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. look jeff they want to learn how to whack <laughs> um, <laughs> So, you, you know, I think you've just got to, you, you, no way to avoid anybody online. They just waiting. It wouldn't matter if you agreed with them. Yeah. They then disagree with you. Right. Even yeah. if you'd agreed with them so yeah. that they could disagree. Yeah. Lack of knowledge, keyboard warriors, yeah. easy to create controversy. Mm. Uh, you know and stay clear of it yeah stay clear of it i mean why you, you know you can be online and you can yeah. get things out there yeah. but forget the feedback you know yeah. I'm, it's it's it, i'll never understand why the feedback is necessary because yeah. today whatever you do however good it is if you said look here's a gold bar I'm going to give everybody in the world a gold bar. You'd have people saying, no, 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 no. Let me tell you why that's wrong. <laughs> it, it wouldn't make any difference. Whatever you do, however good it is, yeah. you're going to get trolls. No two ways about it. Yeah, that's great. You just simply don't engage. Never have, you know. Well, that's great. That's great advice. Hey, you know, I, I, Chris, Chris is an intelligent guy, and he also yeah. said that if he comes out at the end of it and he's made friends and... Uh, networks and he gets to travel then that's yeah. all good and that, that's what i believe and, that, and, and good luck to him with that and there are at the end of the day there are some really nice great people yeah. in this game you know yeah. Yeah, and yeah, definitely. just forget the rest no that's a, well peter that that was like brilliant you know i i'm trying to fly the flag for the organization and I, that on a, on the basis that i'm benefiting a lot from it um i'm yeah. getting no kind Thank of you. other reward from that so Thank you very much for everything that yeah. you've done um, for, for me and our organization. Um, and thank you for inspiring so many people. You know, you, you are definitely someone that's inspired me. I wouldn't be sat where I am. So thank you very much uh, as, as a martial okay. artist. And for no, thank you for that, Mel. That's thank great. You. Good to know. All right. Good. Okay. And, take, and, and yeah, yeah, take care of yourself. All the best.